take two. <laughs> the first broadcast was really a blessing. I was blessed by sharing it, but it had no volume. The volume was not clicked on. Can you imagine as simple as that to block you, the audience, a message of power. I'm Jeffrey Paul. This is day 26 of our 40-day uh, journey into Pentecost, learning to hear God's voice. Our first take didn't come through because there was blockage. There was no electricity coming into my microphone. Today, now you can hear me. <laughs> I had to chuckle after going through, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever the first session was, and I saw all of your names there, and I was really kind of excited that you were probably receiving as much as I was feeling receiving from our daily devotional that I send out. If you don't have the daily devotional each morning in your email, then just click down below, and you'll get it free each day. And then at the end, we'll give you a complete uh, devotional booklet that I have all of the um, sessions in it. And if you go to our YouTube, you can see all the videos and hundreds of other videos of inspiration and excitement for your life that will give you the time of spiritual uplift that you might need, maybe middle of the day, maybe the end of the day, maybe before you go to bed. But let's take two. <laughs> Uh, we were talking about getting into heart training because we've been exercising the, the ability to take captive every thought, to take captive every thought and open it up to allow space for God to speak to you and to bring you his voice, his thoughts, direct you in his ways. And you know, the heart is a funny thing. My wife and I, we went to the Cleveland Clinic and we went for this, um, I don't know, it's not experimental, but they were doing research on the heart. And we were one of the, 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 the cases that they did, the case studies. And they did four hours of examination of our hearts, our arteries. They did ultrasounds and, and, and just every test under the sun. Can you imagine four hours, blood tests and just amazing. All to find out what they were looking for. So I finally sitting with the doctor after all this was done, I said, doc, what are you guys looking for? What is it that you're looking for with all of this examination and all of these instruments that you use? He said, Jeff, we're looking for blockage. Blockage because blockage of the heart, he said, can kill you. He said it can be a widow maker that just drops you in your, in your tracks. He said blockage in the heart is sometimes so hard to see because it builds up slowly and slowly and then boom, it affects you. That's the physical heart. That's the heart of, of the human being, the heart of our pump in our body. But what about your spiritual heart? What are the blockers there? What is the blockage that blocks? We know that cholesterol and fats and the things we shouldn't eat go into our heart and turn into, you know, blockages. And I know that every morning I eat oatmeal. Zena makes me wonderful oatmeal. We have what now is called refrigerator oatmeal, which is all prepared in advance. And I put some granola that she's prepared for me on the top and mix it in, and I eat that every day. Or I eat my ABC breakfast that uh, I've taught about before that I got from Dr. Bob, which is the carrots and the apple and the beets, the ABC diet that helps cleanse the heart. But we're still talking about the physical heart. And we do a lot of things like cardiovascular and nutrition. But what about your spiritual heart? First of all, what are the blockers of spiritual heart? It's not cholesterol. It's not fats. It's not the things that we would expect. But let me tell you what they are right out of the scriptures so that you can relate to these. I want you to do this as an experiment. Pretend I'm a doctor. I'm your spiritual doctor right at the moment. I'm going to ask you some questions to see whether or not you have signs of heart blockage. That may help us get a better um, prognosis of what we do for your health and wellness and what we plan on the exercises for your heart, okay? So answer these questions right from the scriptures. Do you have inner heart blockers, as the scripture talks about? Number one, do you have unforgiveness? Woo! Do you have fear? I mean, pandemic, What? I, I, who doesn't sometimes? How about worry? Doubt. Offenses. Man, an offense can take place in a second. Somebody says one word and you are offended and hurt and bang, you're, you're already offended and it gets those roots down in there. Words of death spoken to you in your life from others. How many people have spoken to you words like, you'll never be able to amount to anything. He, he, he'll, never, he'll never love you and, and he'll, he'll leave you. He, he. Have you had those? Well, they don't just go away. Just like cholesterol doesn't just go away. They start to block the heart. 
And here's one you really got to know is really, really serious. Root of bitterness. Wow. Listen to me. In your daily devotional today, I talked to you about the diet. I'm going to talk to you about it right now. The diet that is in the scriptures that can take you from a unhealthy heart like David had to do in Psalms 51. David, the apple of God's eye, the apple of God's eye had to come before him because he wasn't perfect and God's not looking for you to be perfect. That's the Old Testament. That's not grace. That's not paid for by Jesus Christ. That's not the way. The way in the New Testament is he wants to dine with you. He wants to remain in you and you remain in him. He wants to give to you. He wants to pour into you. He wants to just absolutely commune intimately with you, dialogue with you. That's his delight. That is his pleasure, the scripture says. But if the heart is blocked, you block his voice. How many of you have been in a sink cleaning the you know, dishes or doing something, and all of a sudden the water isn't draining? And it's getting higher instead of getting lower. Have you had that happen? We all probably have. What's happening? There's blockage. And it can actually stop everything. I mean, it may drain for a little bit, but can stop everything. Then you got to rotor rooter it out or something to be able to clear it out. Well, that's what we're going to do in our spiritual heart as as David did, the apple of God's eye, when he prayed out Psalms 51. He said, O Lord, O Lord. Look into my heart. Look into my heart. And you know he wasn't talking about the pump. Look into my heart and see what I cannot see. Reveal to me where I have bitterness. I have blockage. I have worry. I have doubt. I have offenses. Uh, Words of, of death have been spoken to me. Roots of bitterness. Lord. David had his son chase him into, into the, into the uh, desert, uh, took away, tried to take away his throne. He had the Saul who threw spears at him. He had all kinds of issues, but he also did wrongdoings such as Bathsheba and all the things that he did and having Bathsheba's husband killed. He lived a pretty extensive life, but the reality was he wanted to hear God's voice and he knew he needed the diet to do that with. And what's that diet? I've given it to you in the devotional today. But let me, let me share with you the diet and stick with me because there's a story I want to share with you at the end that is really may open your hearts, but also your minds. But here is the diet right from the scriptures, right from Jesus's mouth in the desert, which we've been studying in Mark, uh, Matthew 4. But in Matthew 4, 4, here's where he gives the diet for a healthy heart. He says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is the diet that gives you a healthy heart and maintains the ability to hear God's voice. When you are looking for the ability to hear God's voice, for what? Right now, I'm, I'm going through my journaling today and I, uh, in my teaching, my journaling class, which I'll be sharing with you at the end of this series of teachings and how you can be a part of that. But I, I teach how to take your journaling, tying it back to scripture. I'm doing that right now for my business. What do I do to reopen now that we're coming out of the coronavirus uh, quarantine? I go to my scriptures and I find the answers and then I make notes. Can you tell I uh, kind of write my Bible? But I also put notes of success or when I'm praying for something that that scripture I'm holding on to, holding on to, cleansing my mind of fear, cleansing my mind of these things so I can continue to hear his wisdom, knowledge. If it's a relationship with my son or my wife that I'm having a little bit of root of bitterness or, you know, offense, I go into the scriptures and I let it cleanse my heart. But Jeff, how do I find all these scriptures? It's such a big book. That's why I've given you the link every Sunday when when we're not doing a live teaching. I give you the different places to go worship and and have church service online. But I also give you you version, you version right on your phone. You version, Y-O-U version has the most incredible toolbox in the world. It's a library of intense exercise material from videos to, to scriptures to commentaries to concordances where you can put in worry and come up with the scriptures that you can look at and say, that's the one I'm talking about. That's the one that's speaking to me personally. God's speaking to me from that scripture. And you can put it in the Message Bible. You can, you can learn, read it from the NIV. You can read it from all sorts of different versions. And then you can get commentaries about it. That's where the scriptures begin your diet. 
and it doesn't become just words on a page. In fact, let me share with you another scripture out of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. It says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. It judges the thoughts, and listen to this, the thoughts and attitudes of your mind? No. The thoughts and attitudes of your heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered, laid bare before his eyes, to whom we give account. And is it giving account because of what I did right and what I did wrong? Not if you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Not if you've accepted God into your heart. Because you're going to still do as Paul did. Do the things that I don't want to do when I know that I shouldn't do them. Well, thank God for grace. But as you become closer and cleaned out in your heart, you hear more of his voice speaking and guiding your steps. That before you take that step in the wrong direction, or you speak that word that is not a life-giving word, or even that you take a thought and it's not God's thought, then you get closer to him and he helps you capture that step before you take it in the wrong direction. He helps you capture and bridle that mouth before you speak those harsh words. He takes captive those thoughts that are negative and places his thoughts, his ways, his words within you. And you see, the scriptures are simply based on his voice. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is God's voice. But how do you make it personal? How do you tie it into your home life? How do you tie it into your, your health? How do you tie it into your wife and husband and kids and work and career and coronavirus and all these things? How do you do that? It's based on the learning of tying the three voices of God together. The voices of God are the Logos, which is the written word of God. That's the scripture. The Rhema, which is the voice of God, the still quiet voice, the whisper that, that Elijah heard in the cave, outside the cave. And then koinonia. Koinonia is the fellowship of people who have the same language and listen to the same voice. And as you hear this voice and you begin to journal, as I will continue to teach you about, and you connect it to scriptures that affirm, align, instruct, direct your path in what he's told you personally, and then you're into the relationship of journaling and hearing it from him in in intimately, then when you're in a situation like this, or when you're in the church service, or you're with fellows in a Bible study, or something that your community, your koinonia is together, they share and confirm. It's like, how is that possible? I'll show you. Yesterday I had a made deep, deep conversation, Bible study with my son, Emmanuel. It was precious. It was wonderful. And I shared with him what was almost an hour. And... You know, we really, really, really connected. But no more than 10 or 20 minutes later, a friend of mine from a men's group that I attend with Journey Church sends me a copy of this, a picture of his journal that day. He had no idea what was going on. He had no idea. But the Lord spoke to him to send this to me. This affirmed every word that we were saying and he was asking my son. It was like, it gave me, it just gave me goosebumps again because it was just like, and I don't care if you've been walking with the Lord 40 years as I have had that opportunity and blessing or four days. He will speak to you. He will guide you. He will lead you. That's what this whole journey of 40 days is about. Let me share with you one little story that I said I didn't want you to leave until you hear this story. It's a little story that really, really touches my heart every time that I think about God speaking to me, bringing me victory, bringing me instructions, bringing me guidance, bringing me encouragement, bringing me hope, and making me feel loved. Johnny was a little boy that had leukemia. And Johnny was enthusiastic about the scriptures. He was like, he, he like, he was like, like Timothy was, he just had it right from birth. He just had passion to read the scriptures and to read the stories about Jesus and to read the, 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 you know, the things that Jesus did and what he wanted him to do. But this Johnny, he was fighting his good fight of faith to get through the leukemia. But the body gave up. Uh, and the doctors couldn't do anything further, and Johnny passed away. He went into the heavenly realms, of course, and at the, you know, the pearly gates, who meets him? But Peter. 
Peter's there going, Johnny, we've been waiting for you. We're so excited that you're here. Jesus wanted me to show you around personally. He said he wanted me to be your concierge. Just, I've got the keys here. I'm going to show you behind every door, everything that we have, and then we'll take you to the mansion that we prepared for you. This is your day, Johnny. And Johnny's jumping up and down. He's so pumped up. He's so excited. And he goes through and sees all of the things that he had, had just absolutely read about, but he was seeing with his eyes, and he was just elated. But there was one set of doors, enormous doors, enormous. He could almost barely see the top of the, 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 the rim of the door. And he said, Peter, what's behind those doors? Because there was a big lock on it. Peter kind of shrugged, kind of a sad look on his face. And he took a key from his ring and he opened up and swung the doors open. And when the doors opened, there was a sea, I'm talking an ocean of presents and wrapped beautiful gifts, just a sea of them piled high. And Johnny's going, I know what those are. Those are the rewards of the saints for, for our, when we receive Jesus Christ in our life. That's, that's, that's the rewards he talked about in the Bible. Peter said, no, Johnny, I'm sorry to tell you this. Those are all the gifts that God prepared and wrapped for people throughout the ages that never heard his voice, never accepted his gifts and his blessings and his love and his compassion and his kindness and all the things that he had for them. They didn't accept it. That's what's behind these doors. That may be a sad story for the moment, but it's an awakening story. It's a story that reminds us that if we're not hearing God's voice, especially at a time like this, but all the time, when we're not hearing his voice, when we have blockages of our heart, when our mind is not being renewed because we have the flow of the relationship of his blood, his body, his bread of life, which is the scriptures, his voice, and the koinonia around us, it is absolutely a sad story. Because you could be walking around as a Christian, born again, and going to go to heaven but never hear his voice, never receive the instructions of how to find the best marriage and how to live the best life and how to be the best parent or the best kid or the best worker or the best, whatever it might be. It's time to really know that you need to take captive every thought and place God's thoughts, God's ways, God's instructions through his scriptures and through his rhema, through his rhema, through his voice and through koinonia, those that speak like him. Like I said, we're going to be sharing at the end of the 40 days, which is Pentecost Sunday, we're going to be sharing on how you can join me to go through a workshop on how to truly hear God's voice, how to journal, how to connect the dots. That was the one question my son Emmanuel asked yesterday, Dad, I got these scriptures and I've got these journals, but I just don't feel like the dots are connected, but I know they're all here. And I said, that's what takes the koinonia. So many times you may have it, but you might need a coach. You might think, I took him to Isaiah 30. And Isaiah 30 said that your teachers will no longer be hidden. Once you hear his voice, he, you'll hear his voice say, this is the way I walk in it. And your teachers will not be hidden. That means that the things of the koinonia, that your teachers and pastors and, and, and those that are in your life that speak to God and hear God like you do, will affirm, even if they don't even know it, the sermon might be just perfect for you. Or this session might be, Jeff, this is what I've been asking God for. That's God in the unseen blessing. That's the miracle of life, of being one with God int intimately, intimately, intimately. Today, I feel like I could go on and on since it's the second take because the first one, you didn't have any voice. I hope you have voice now because I don't think I'm doing a third. But if God calls me to do that, I will. Share this because there's so many people. I don't want them to be those people who didn't receive their gifts. Share these. Share these words through by hitting that little share button. And if you haven't gotten our devotional, go down and click that or go to our YouTube and click and subscribe so that you can be a part of inspiration every day and, and never miss something in case you were busy or slept in. <laughs> but listen to his voice. Listen to his voice. Listen to his voice. There's nothing he can't tell you. There's nothing that he won't reveal to you. In John 14, 26 and 27 says, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That's what happens on Pentecost. And I hope it's already happened to you, but it needs to be fanned into flame daily. But he comes to teach, remind, instruct, encourage, give you strength, give you protection, give you provision, all those things. Yes, there is still battles. And yes, there is still difficulties. But the greatest battle is between your ears. The greatest battle is the thoughts you think. 
because if they're not God's thoughts coming from God's voice, coming into you from God's word, then it's not the abundant life that John 10.10 10 talks about that Christ has come to give you and I. So let's go give it away too because it's free to you and it's free to everybody you hit and click that share button for. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully in take one. <laughs>